everyone now this is the first time i'm making this kind of a video um it's going to be a little bit of a different video it's not your regular aesthetic vlogs um but basically this video is going to talk about how i've gotten into different art schools and how uh, my portfolio has developed over the time and also some portfolio tips and college tips that you guys should keep in mind before you decide your college and before you apply to your colleges so to start off i want to talk about how many colleges i applied to and which colleges i applied to uh, so i applied to one college in india only i was planning to apply to many more but by that time my us decisions and my uk decisions had already come so i thought there's no need and uh, i applied to one college in the uk um and i applied to a total of five colleges in the states now in india i applied to isdi in uk i applied to ual in uh, america i applied to sva mica saic parsons and cca i do want to mention that i got into all the colleges that i applied to which was pretty cool and uh, i received a scholarship from three different colleges which are saic mica and cca by the way all the colleges that i applied to did require a portfolio and i used the same portfolio in all three places the only difference was the sequence and the write up about it which that can take place differently according to the colleges that you're applying to the first piece in my portfolio that i'd like to talk about is called monsters and um this particular piece was made with charcoal pen and ink uh so as you can see that the background that bluish background is actually done all with ink then the main monster uh is has been done with charcoal and pen and uh, the girl with the little color around her has been done with ink as well uh and by the way i have my laptop here that's what i'm referring to <laughs> So this particular piece was 23.4 into 33.1 inches so that's like around an A2 kind of size uh it was made in the year 2019 uh and what i wrote about is is that dark thoughts tend to affect people in the strangest ways possible i have uh, represented these dark thoughts in the form of a monster trying to engulf the girl amidst thunderous clouds i've used charcoal to project the emotion in a dense manner however monsters are not indestructible one can gain victory over their thoughts through sustained efforts which is portrayed to the girl who is breaking the monster into fragments the destroyed parts radiate hope and joy in colorful patterns and if you guys look closely um in to the part where the girl is she's actually stabbing the monster with a sword and there's light and color coming through that so that basically means that there is still hope and positivity even in a place when you're very negative the second piece i created is actually a sculpture called picking uh it's made with modeling material so you get this kind of material which you can cast your hand in there's also youtube videos about it so you guys can check those out um and the uh paint is around the hands is not actually paint it's makeup uh and uh, there's a fake rose that's placed in the middle and there are bandages around the fingers and the base has been painted with acrylic paint now getting on the, to the concept uh i've been diagnosed with anxiety disorder so a lot of my art pieces are related with psychological aspects and anxiety and mental health uh so this is one of those pieces and the first piece was also related to that now my chest pain anxiety disorder manifested in many ways one of which which included really can't speak well relentlessly picking at my hand skin meanwhile i saw a more beautiful version of picking and plucking of flowers uh in this art piece the picking of the skin signifies all the negativity that surrounds people and their actions while they self harm now uh please make sure that this is not a piece that is promoting self harm in any which way it's just that my experience and how i've dealt with anxiety and the positive light is how picking comes in of picking of flowers however this has been contrasted with a message of healing and hope like i said before uh in the form of positive picking in keeping with the material i try to keep the idea of picking as real as possible so if you guys look closely um 
um, there is like blood uh, around the fingers, which is actually lipstick. And these are my hands of Picasso. So I wanted it to be as realistic as possible and as close to me, which is one thing that you guys should remember in your portfolio because at the end of the day, they want to see your personality come through your art. So it's very important to represent you even if it's in the best version or the worst version but it has to be you now my third piece is called lost and it's about an a4 size it's an illustrative piece that i did with sharpies and microns back then uh it was made in the year 2019 as well uh honestly i hadn't thought too much about this piece and i kind of put it in because it had a deeper concept without me even realizing that it did um now if you can see that the uh, image on the left actually has a girl who is all black and white with people around her and colors. So the contrast of colors represents that she's feeling lonely and lost. So a person can feel very lost in the crowd, but a person can feel very whole and complete by themselves as well. So just because you are alone doesn't mean you're lonely and just because you're with everyone doesn't mean that you're complete and you feel very fulfilled and very happy about it. Uh, now the fourth piece that I want to talk about is called My Delhi. Another thing is that if you're an international student by the way, the colleges really like to see stuff that depicts your culture and what you see and how you observe your own city or your own country. That's why this piece is called My Delhi. Uh, again, it's about A4 size. Uh, it's about an A4 size artwork and it's done with microns and watercolor. Now, when someone looks at my city, New Delhi, they tend to notice a concrete jungle. However, amidst this jungle and jumbles of wires, there are splashes of color which represent diversity and beauty which can keep your glance if you don't dive deep enough. In this piece, I'm also trying to depict that amongst the fast pace and the mess, we are all connected by interwoven wires and diverse cultures in one of the world's largest cosmopolitan cities. And uh, this particular piece really was my observation of my city. So don't take like conventional thoughts about your city or your country. It's very important to show your perspective of your culture and your background. Now, my fifth piece is actually uh, an acrylic on canvas. So basically the canvas was about three feet by two feet. So a pretty large canvas and it's called an artistic mind. Now, um, the concept behind this particular piece was that whenever I feel like painting something or drawing something or creating something, I always feel a sense of calmness. And another way I feel a sense of calmness is through nature and through being part of nature because I live in basically a concrete jungle and I'm always encapsulated with the four walls of my own room whenever I'm creating something. So nature was a way to uh, put in the fact that I feel calm uh, when I'm creating something and obviously through nature as well. Now uh, if you can see uh, the head has been split into two halves and uh, that's why this particular piece is called an artistic mind because I kind of wanted to show what goes on in my head when I'm creating something and uh, this particular piece was also created by me in 2019. Now the two heads, the one head that's split up into two halves is actually made with air dry clay and then painted on top and uh, the main piece and the background is done with acrylic paint only. So this particular piece is actually one of my favorites is because I kind of discovered what kind of style of art I'm inclined towards and uh, uh, a, one of my biggest inspirations for this piece is actually Takashi Murakami's uh, super flat kind of style. Uh, that's why if you see a lot of these characters are like very vibrant colors but they don't have that much like depth to them. Um, now this particular piece uh, has all the original characters. I had searched everywhere trying to find like characters which are similar to this and I couldn't find any. So all of these three characters are created by me. Uh, another thing about this piece is that it flowed very organically and it was really fun to do. 
so um, when I was feeling hungry, so I would make a sandwich in it. Or when I would see a pair of socks in my wardrobe, I would create, I would draw a pair of socks and put like little features on them and stuff. So this piece was a lot of fun to make, and I think that's also one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite pieces as well. Okay, now with this particular piece, I customized my denim jacket actually and it was an inspiration that I took from my actual friends in real life because the ice cream sundae is something that we all love to eat in my friend group and uh, me and my girls were having a sleepover and we ordered ice cream sundae and we were just like eating our hearts out and then finally I was like oh my god this is actually a really cool idea for me to customize my denim jacket with because it also holds a special meaning to my heart and at the same time it's something which will look super dope so that that's why I created this and every face on the actual ice cream sundae kind of depicts my each person from my friend group. So this was really nice to make and holds a special place in my heart. Now this piece is an illustrative piece and it kind of talks about the mind space of a teenager. Uh, you know, you see this girl who's like just smiling in the middle but all of these surroundings that are very trippy and psychedelic because a teenager's mind is filled with a lot of emotions and a lot of angst uh, and that's why I even wrote lost and crazy in Hindi because again it's kind of an ode to my own country and my own culture uh, and I loved creating this piece because it came very naturally and it has elements which have linked to my different piece with my other pieces as well so for example it has the paper airplanes and the polaroids and the psychedelic colors which i always love to use in my pieces and this was also very interesting to create my next piece is actually a piece called wonderland and uh, this was inspired by alice in wonderland that when she goes down the rabbit hole she enters this world which is kind of out of this world in a way and uh, uh, this piece basically talked about my wonderland so there are different uh, elements of things which make me happy and which are interesting to me so there's food and there's like this building which has my birthday which is 25 and then it has my name written in, in Hindi over there and then it has a camera because photography is also a very integral part of my life and again the use of psychedelic colors comes in so like i said this was when i totally found my style and i knew what i kind of want to do and the kind of growth i want to show using this particular style overall uh, and this piece was really nice because alice in wonderland is like one of my favorite stories so it was a nice piece to get inspired from as well so this next piece is actually an installation that me and a friend of mine from my batch uh, created and it's about five feet by five feet by eight feet so it was a pretty big installation um so we created this piece for an exhibition to raise awareness on the increasing air pollution in our city uh, our creative expression was found uh, with through the medium of glass as it depicts the delicate nature of human body. The installation hopes to represent the comparison between a world laden with pollutants and a world where, which is pollution free. That's why the front is with dirty glass bottles and with newspaper articles about air pollution and dirt inside the actual glass bottles as well uh, and brown spray paint to show this toxic sort of environment but as you go behind the mannequin you see this beautiful piece decked out with lights and uh, inside the glass bottle there are these flowers so which basically shows that there is still hope for humanity and uh, air pollution is has not reached the stage where it can actually become so bad that it will kill us all so that's what we wanted to uh, represent from this particular installation the next piece is actually a graphic piece and it's called hello um i made this when i was starting off my little graphic design stuff and i'm still not very good at graphic design but this somehow did turn out well so one of the biggest causes of mental trauma or mental illness 
illness is actually uh, a one-sided relationship and that's what I wanted to talk about so which often triggers in toxicity uh, keeping that in mind I decided to create this abstract graphic piece using Adobe Illustrator which depicts the questions feelings and emotions that are raised in a one-sided relationship uh, mostly by short phrases of digital communication so that's why if you see the actual text there only text that from which are one-sided and you're actually sending out then compared to the other person sending back a text and with the colors like black and red I wanted it to be a very strong piece um, which shows this side this sort of impact and uh, in fact the faces like the little icons in there don't actually have a face because there's no one who's replying from the other end so um, I think this piece as well had a very good impact in my um, portfolio even though it was something about a negative impact so it's not always the case that you have to show this a perfect sugar coated portfolio you just have to be yourself you just have to talk about things that you believe in the things that are important to you that are significant in your life so that's something that's very important to keep in mind when you're creating your portfolio the next piece in my portfolio is actually called metamorphosis and this is a book sculpture so uh, to find a lot of my inspiration i do go through pinterest i'm not going to deny that everyone needs some form of inspiration and I saw these different kinds of book sculptures that people were creating and I thought it's a very interesting medium to create something from. So this is about 10.5 by 8 inches. Uh, I made it in 2019 as well. One of the most impactful aspects of growing up certainly is not limited to growing up physically. Uh, it is about transforming ourselves internally and emotionally as an individual just as a caterpillar transforms itself into a butterfly by breaking out of its cocoon. The representation of the cocoon symbolizes my world, the one which I'll be leaving behind once I graduate from school. It invokes the new world I'll be entering once I join college. Uh, it also symbolizes the vices and grudges that I intend to shed off as I grow and develop as a person and an individual. The next piece that you see is actually a canvas and it's called Room. Uh, it's a 30 by 40 inches canvas. Uh, I made this in 2019 as well. So it's been inspired by this particular wall that you see behind me. And uh, I feel like this particular piece uh, shows off my personality in the best way possible. And if you had to encapsulate me in one painting, it would be this particular painting. So from the multi-perspective of design, structure and layout, my room has always carried different pockets of inspiration for me. Sometimes it can be paintings, there are those photographs or furniture in the room that I love to take uh, inspiration from and evokes a certain memory. I wanted to create a piece which is inspired from the huge wall in my room and that it encapsulates the essence of my room in a way for me that shows off my personality in the best way. So I'm going to dwell upon the main um, elements of this particular art piece. Now if you see the guitar is because I have this acoustic guitar in my room which you can't see in the frame right now but it's there and uh, it's something that I'll always love to play in my free time and then I have uh, my name written in Chinese from when I had gone to Shanghai a couple of years ago. Then there's like a silhouette of my family photograph. There are also different sorts of uh, paper planes which you can see which basically depicts that all my uh, different aspects of life are connected to one another. Uh, then there's also like these little characters which you can see which is from a poster in my room. I think you guys can see that too. It's here. Uh, and uh, the sort of black and white geometrical uh, patterns and the softness with the colors is what I really wanted to bring out and that shows the contrast in my own personality as a person uh, so this piece is really interesting to make it took a very long time because the canvas was huge uh, and a lot of effort but it was I think one of the best pieces that I've created ever not only just portfolio wise so I really love this piece like I mentioned before, photography is a very integral part of my life. That's why I wanted to add some of my photography and little photo shoots that I've done with my friends. And uh, uh, even though there are different people in this particular picture, um, 
I wanted to kind of, kind of combine the fact that they're in one with nature and they're in one with all these plants because that's something that really heightened and enhanced my photography in a way because of the harsh lighting and shadows and um, how the structure kind of falls in every picture and that one ongoing theme in every picture so I kind of combined it all together and then presented it so this was just another photography piece my last piece which um, is also a piece that I really really love uh, and took a lot of effort and hard work it was my Parsons challenge and something that I used in my portfolio as well to kind of put an end to everything because um, this particular piece kind of ends with a bang um, it was also my board project for my senior year uh, which is basically something that we need to do at the end of the year and present it to this jury you could say um, so this particular piece is something that I got inspired from from a little girl now a little girl imagines her dream home or her dream life from a dollhouse because that's one of the first few toys that a little girl experiences and uh, a dollhouse is something that is kind of your ideal world as a kid but then as you grow up you experience different emotions and uh, go through different obstacles in life that teach you different lessons along the way and that's what I wanted to depict from each room in this house. Now there are a total of six rooms and uh, there are three negative rooms and there are three positive rooms. The three negative rooms are anger slash hate. Uh, sadness and anxiety uh, which is all three negative emotions that I can relate to a lot and I think a lot of other people can relate to too. Uh, the three positive rooms are actually happiness, uh, creativity and love uh, which again a lot of people can relate to including me. So that's the end of my portfolio. Now coming on to tips, uh, there are lots of tips that I'd like to mention but I'm going to mention all the main tips uh, in a very short and crisp manner. You guys can always DM me if you want to know more details, uh, I'll leave my Instagram handle below. So tip number one is that you should be yourself no matter what. Um, it's your inspiration, your ideas, your beliefs, your concept because you're the artist and that's very uh, important while creating your portfolio. Tip number two is to experiment with mediums. Use as many mediums as you can and use unconventional things. Like it doesn't always have to be a paper and a pen. You know, I used a book and I tore out different pieces from it and then made something. Uh, I know someone who has used glass and uh, different rocks present in their backyard. Uh, and uh, it's something that is really cool about art is that you can kind of do it anywhere you like to so experiment with mediums as much as you can even if you think you're not comfortable with a certain medium go ahead and do it try it out if it doesn't work out you don't have to put it in your portfolio but it's totally fine another tip i'd like to mention is that be patient and be calm it's gonna be very frustrating many times because you'll be thinking oh i'm not good enough or uh, this is not gonna get me into college or my pieces are terrible but at the end of the day, it's you who's doing all the hard work. It's you whose performance is going to be executed as long as you just be patient. And it can be very irritating and frustrating when things do not work out your way. But guys, just remember, it's going to be okay. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this was a first and uh, I really hope uh, these tips were helpful and I really am open to any questions you guys want to ask about anything. Uh, I will be going to SAIC which is the School of the Arts Institute Chicago and I'm very excited to go there um, and uh, hopefully everything works out well. Have a good day guys. Bye!